Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening, everyone. Seven Tasmania News has obtained exclusive vision tonight of a frightening attempt at carjacking in Launceston. A father and his son were driving home from church on Sunday when they were approached by a man. They managed to capture the disturbing encounter on a phone. Sunday night in Launceston, a man wanders down the centre of the road and makes this demand. Behind the wheel was Warwick Green and his seven-year-old son Oliver. The pair was heading home from church when they spotted the agitated man attacking another car on Elizabeth Street. He quickly turned on them. Uh, he demanded that I take out the keys and give them to him and then uh, when we didn't he sort of sat on the bonnet. The man tries to open the locked driver's door. It's just, don't worry, he won't get in. <laughs> He realised that he wasn't going to be able to get in, so he walked off and he like tried to rip the side mirror off. Were you scared at all? Yeah. yeah. Police say they're aware of the incident, but aren't treating the matter as a carjacking. In Tasmania, confirmed carjackings are extremely rare. Warwick says he's still shocked by what happened and is just thankful he locked the doors. I don't know what would have happened if he had opened the back door where my son was sitting or opened the, my driver's side door. It could have been a completely different scenario. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. The state government has faced a barrage of questions over just how it plans to fund our struggling hospitals moving forward. On a rowdy first day back in Parliament, concerns over health funding continue to be at the centre of scrutiny. The former health minister out on the tools, finding his feet in a new portfolio while his replacement faced the heat in Parliament. Question time kicking off after the winter break in rowdy fashion. It's going to have a moment of calm. <coughs> The government forced to deny claims there could be further cuts coming to our embattled hospitals. Tasmania's health system can't sustain further cuts. Our health workforce is already stretched to the limit and to expect them to deliver more cut on more cuts is going to put patients in danger. We're certainly looking to continue to employ doctors and nurses. That's exactly what uh, we're doing as we open more beds. And uh, as a member of the government, uh, we're all making sure that we are being very careful with taxpayers' money. And doubts over whether a new 50-bed rehabilitation facility in Hobart will be built. Promised by the government to the Speaker in return for her sticking with the party. Sue Hickey has made a suggestion and has agreed with the Minister to work through it as we progress the best way to provide support to people uh, with mental illness. But in a step forward for mental health, the government accepted all recommendations of an expert report calling for better community support and intervention centres. All of whom play a role in linking people into appropriate supports, help build individual capacity and avoid escalation of mental illness or the likelihood of relapse. Although it's very positive news, the Integration Task Force, uh, there is a gap between uh, now and when services will move online into more of a community setting. Parliament continues tomorrow. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Shipping containers are being brought into Hobart to help house the homeless. The state government is also pursuing rapid rezoning of land in Hobart and Launceston to deal with the housing crisis. In a matter of months, this garden will be home to a new initiative, helping tackle Hobart's housing crisis. Demand is high, and I would say it's been high for probably a year or more. It's reaching its peak at the moment, as you can imagine, with the winter weather. Five million dollars announced today to expand existing shelters, creating room for up to 70 more vulnerable people including at Bethlehem House, where shipping containers like this will be rapidly rolled out, all including a bedroom, ensuite and storage. This is an initiative the government could have taken far sooner to make sure that people this winter were housed and kept out of the cold. This is a stitch in time to deal with uh, people who have been struggling to find housing options. Housing supply is also an issue in other parts of the state. 
The government is looking to rezone six parts of land around Launceston, including at Rochalee, Ravenswood and Newstead. But the council is looking for more answers. We don't know the type of development, what size blocks, how many blocks, who's going to, who's going to be able to do the developing, that type of thing. So a lot more information needs to be had before we can start making some of those assumptions. Whilst there is concern over fast-tracking the rezoning, Launceston City Council says there is a need for more affordable housing in the region, with areas like this a prime spot to develop. We can't have people complaining that vulnerable people don't have a roof over their head, but then they're not prepared to look at different options to increase housing in Tasmania. We do need different lot sizes, we do need to use land better. Elizabeth O'Neill, 7 Tasmania News. A sister's beach man remains in a critical condition after his car was hit by a truck at Boat Harbour yesterday morning. It's believed the 60-year-old was attempting to make a turn on the Bass Highway when the prime mover collided into the rear of the sedan. The truck driver did not receive any physical injuries. Police are appealing for anyone with information to come forward. A controversial hotel development on Rosny Hill in Hobart has been revived. The plan has been scaled down from 100 rooms to 60, but is still facing opposition from some community groups. A local developer is relaunching his bid for a hotel on Rosny Hill. The original design stirred controversy and had to be withdrawn. The new plan scaled down to 60 hotel rooms. We slightly reduced the size of the development. We also took out uh, a sort of a conference centre that was um, sort of, if you like, impinging on the, on, the, on the nature of the reserve a little. The hill has one of the best views in Hobart, but those opposed are worried about the loss of community amenity and still don't support the scaled down project. But it's still a large hotel development on a small nature conservation reserve, which is public land owned by the people. The developer says a large part of the project is the restoration of the bushland and a much needed revamp of public facilities. It's very, very sad. There's some things that happen up there that shouldn't, like sort of, it's a great dumping ground for cars. Uh, all of those sorts of things uh, do happen. It's neglected. Council has just provided landowner consent and is now assessing the new development application. We're aware that uh, certain elements of the community have some concerns and those concerns will be uh, addressed through the consultation process that is part of the planning uh, approval process. When it's finished, will be something that the whole of uh, Hobart region will say, oh wow, how, how special. So that's what keeps us going. But the project is still sure to face an uphill battle to convince some residents. Michael Breen, 7 Tasmania News. Prominent environmentalist Bob Brown has claimed the government's new proposed West Coast walk could lead to deaths. He's proposed an alternative route at a lower elevation, saying it would be less exposed and windy, but also more scenic for walkers. Saying the current plan takes visitors through fragile alpine areas, concerned the rare wilderness would suffer. To make it safe, the infrastructure which would be required up there will transmogrify one of the most delightfully beautiful places on the planet. The actual route hasn't been selected. That's something that's going to be worked through as the government, uh, based on the advice of experts, works through the best route and the best way to make it feasible. The feasibility study will be completed in coming months. Welcome back. The Rochalie community has come together to design its own 14-week health and wellbeing program. Members of the SHED chose the topics on the agenda with the help of Healthy Tasmania. The sessions will cover understanding prescription medicines, healthy eating and mental health. It's absolutely wonderful to see what, what they can do, not what they, you don't look at what they can't do. The participants say the meetings provide them with a place to share their thoughts and experiences. First aid experts are trading up Tasmanian children to be lifesavers in an emergency. The Cool Kids First Aid Initiative is going into preschools to help teach them how to call emergency services and what to do if there's a medical situation at home. We're teaching them how to roll a person into the recovery position, how to check for breathing and then how to call triple zero. 
The program also showing the youngsters how to recognise safe people in their community in times of need. A donation of winter woolies is bolstering supplies for Tasmanian charities. More than 100 beanies were collected during the Festival of Voices to help warm up the needy. They've been handed over to Free on a Tree and the Hobart City Mission. It's really fantastic. We've got um, lots of people who have knitted these amazing beanies for the Festival of Voices and uh, now we're the lucky recipients or, uh, along with the Hobart City Mission. It's not just the beanie itself, it's what it represents. It, it represents people of Hobart supporting those who are doing it tough. They will be distributed to homeless people in need across the greater Hobart area. Now a look at the day's business and finance news. The Australian stock market has hit its highest ever levels today, eclipsing the previous mark set more than 11 years ago. The ASX 200 index closed up 19.3 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 68.99 US cents and a little over 104 New Zealand cents. Domestic one-day cricket will return to Hobart for the first time since 2017 with the 2019-2020 Tasmanian Tigers fixture release today. In an all-new format, the Tigers will play their last two matches of the Marsh One-Day Cup at Blunston Arena in November, while in the Sheffield Shield, the side will play three home matches at the ground before the season breaks for the Big Bash on December 10. The men's domestic one-day season begins on September 23 at the Wacker, with the Tigers' first Sheffield Shield match on October 10, also in Perth. To hockey and Derwent can take a big step towards sealing the Women's Premier League Minor Premiership this weekend when they take on fellow competition heavyweights North West grads. Derwent moved three points clear on the ladder over the weekend with a hard-fought 2-1 win over second-placed OHA, while the battle for the last final spot is heating up with Canterbury sitting just one win behind the fourth-placed Diamondbacks as the sides prepare to face off in Hobart this Saturday. Welcome back. 11 degrees today in Hobart. Launceston had the state's top with 13 degrees after a very cold start, if I do say so, with 11 degrees in Burnie and Devonport. 12 degrees at Smithton today as well as Bushy Park. 11 for Lowhead, Wynyard, Fingal, Campania and Ooze. 11 also on the Bass Strait Islands. 10 degrees for Sheffield and Strawn with the chilly 4 degrees after a minus 3 start for Lyweeny. On the charts, cloud dominates western and southern parts of the state today. A cloud band with some embedded storms tracks up the New South Wales coast, with low cloud covering much of Victoria and southern coastal regions. Tomorrow the ridge flattens out with a cold front approaching over the southern ocean just south of the bight. West to northwesterly winds 15 to 25 knots in the south, reaching up to 30 later. Westerly winds 5 to 15 knots, variable in the upper east and reaching up to 20 in the west and the north later on, with seas up to 2 metres and higher through the south. There's a strong wind warning current for southern coastal waters from Tasman Island to Low Rocky Point and also a road weather alert warning of ice on susceptible roads tomorrow morning. Cloudy for the south tomorrow, 12 degrees in Hobart, 11 for Jeeveston, 9 and morning frost for Bothwell. Morning frost and clear skies in Launceston, 13 degrees, 12 in Devonport, Cressy, 10 and a frosty start expected there. 12 in Burnie, 10 degrees the top with light showers for Strawn and 11 degrees at Curry, with a sunny 14 in St Helens and Swansea, 13 with clouds for Orford. Showers expected about the west and the south and also the Bass Strait Islands on Thursday. Light showers about the west increasing later on Friday but pretty fine elsewhere with showers about western, southern and central parts on Saturday but fine conditions for most other areas. Looking around Australia now, sunny and 22 degrees in Perth tomorrow, 14 for Adelaide, early fog and 13 in Melbourne, 16 for Sydney and showers for Brisbane, 21 degrees. And it's 7 degrees at the moment in Hobart. A clear night in Launceston, 6 degrees and 7 and clear for Devonport. Joe, tonight's top tip from Aurora Energy, make the most of the sunny weather tomorrow. Give the dryer a break. Naturally, you can see I've already given mine up because everything shrinks anyway. So <laughs> what can you do? Put it out on the line. Thanks very much for that, Sam. Before we leave you tonight, whale watchers have been given an incredible show with four southern right whales getting up close and personal. The majestic creatures made quite the splash as they frolicked in waters in the Great Australian Bight off the Nullarbor coast of South Australia. The giants were spotted having migrated from Antarctic waters to the head of the bight for the mating season. They are beautiful. 
That is all from the team for now. Thanks for your company. We'll see you a little later with updates. Bye-bye.